Well, for the very latest now, let's cross over to Harare, where our correspondent Adrian Kreish is standing by. Adrian, the results came in in the middle of the night. What's been the reaction so far this morning? Well, the situation here in Harare is still a little bit tense, I would say. Life is not fully back to normal. It has improved compared to yesterday, for example, when you could only see police and military on the streets. Today, you still see police and military on the streets, but some of the shops have opened, some banks even opened, so it's slowly getting back to normal. But some people here have the feeling that the whole election drama is not yet over, and we will talk about the reasons right now. We have two guests here, one representative of the uh, opposition party, Mr. Jameson Timber. He is the chief chief election agent for uh, Mr. Chamisa, the pen, uh, presidential candidate of the opposition party. And we also have a representative of the ZANU-PF, the governing party, Nick Mwangana. Um, he is the ZANU-PF representative in Europe. I would like to ask you first, uh, Mr. Timba, your party is not accepting the results of these elections. Why? There are a lot of discrepancies in this uh, electoral process, both in terms of procedure and process and the manner in which what was done. And our position is very clear. We have not accepted the outcome of this election, and it's ain't over. What's your reaction to that? Well, it's no surprise. These guys um, have been fearing these elections for a very long time. They even said that um, the only result they would accept um, is the one in which they would have been come out victorious. Now, this is a result in which they were walloped in a big way. So they will not accept. That's not a surprise. Um, in, from where we stand, there's an OPF. You engage in a process. You have endorsed the process. When you endorse the process, you endorse an outcome. That's our position. Now, what's your way forward then? If you will not accept the results, are you going to challenge them in court or are you calling for demonstrations? First of all, we do not endorse any election. Section 110 of the Electoral Act requires that ZEC must put before the election agents of all the presidential candidates the V23 form, which shows the presidential result per constituency. It is that. V23, which must be verified by each of the agents, who then sign off that result before it is announced. Zek indicated to us that before we do any announcement, we shall call you back, show you the result in terms of the V23, okay, verify that, and then announce. And it didn't happen. So, but what's your way forward then? What's, what is your plan? We will be indicating to you our plans, but I can tell you that we are not accepting this result and we are not accepting this outcome. So, are you going to court? Well, we are going to be challenging this result, but I'm not, going, I'm not at liberty at this juncture to tell you how. We've seen a, an outbreak of violence on Wednesday in particular when opposition demonstrators went to the streets to protest and the security forces apparently killed six people. The government is in charge of the security forces. Why did that happen? <coughs> I don't speak for the government, I speak for ZANU-PF, but that said, they didn't go to the streets to, pro to protest. They went to the streets to vandalize property. They went to the streets to cause mayhem. They burned the ZANU-PF bus. They tried to burn ZANU-PF headquarters, uh, the provincial headquarters. They tried to invade ZANU-PF headquarters out there, to, and, um, and they couldn't be allowed to do that. They tried to come in here. They smashed that uh, uh, gut post today, as you can see. It's all smashed up. So you cannot say that the, um, it was just a protest. No, it was vandalism. That said, it's unfortunate and very sad that people lost their lives, and it shouldn't be. Mr. Timba said he is not sure if there will be demonstration or what the way forward is. We can still see massive security force presence here. Will demonstrations be allowed? I, as I said, I don't speak for government. I don't speak for the security organs either. But demonstrations are normally allowed in Zimbabwe. What's not allowed is people trying to smash up things, people burning buses, people burning cars, people having petrol bombs, people ma 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 marauding around the street with machetes. No, that's not allowed. So he's saying basically the members of your party staged that violent protest. Uh, is that true or not? That is not correct. What happened two days ago was a spontaneous reaction to the rigging and theft that has been taking place when as far as this election is concerned. It was a spontaneous response by ordinary people who have been suffering for the plus 38 years under ZANU-PF rule. 90% of our youth today are unemployed and all they need is a very small trigger and that's what happened. What we are living under now is a police state. It is a military state in which people's freedoms are curtailed. You cannot have an army opening live ammunition against an unarmed, defenseless population. It can never be justified under any circumstances. 
A last quick question to you. He's mentioned 90% unemployment. ZANU PF has run down the economy of this country. Heavily indebted Zimbabwe is. A uh, lot of people say there's no way out of that. What will the new president do to get the country back on track? This, the new president is already um, getting the, new, the, the country back on track with 70,000 people employed in a, in a period of six months. But Yes, there, there has been a lot of um, things that NPF could account for um, under the leadership of President Mugabe, but there is a lot of things these guys have to account for. The sanctions that are, this country has been under, which is still under, they are the ones, they are the major advocates for them. They Who are they? The MDC. The MDC, the party represents. They are still advocating for those. These moves, these machinations to put the country in a crisis mode is again to, supposed to put or to bring, a, or to visit rather, a, a suffering upon the people of Zimbabwe so that they would protest against the government and then their protest would be their vote. They have no program. Their program is a protest. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And uh, we go back to Terry with that. Thank you. Adrian, thank you so much for rounding that up. And uh, thanks also to your two guests, uh, Adrian Kreese there in Harare.